mission of the Red Cross is pretty simple. It hasn't changed in over 100 years, and it is to help people prevent, prepare for, and respond to emergencies in their lives. Red Cross told me they offered a uh, babysitting class, so I asked Asia if she wanted to, and she was really excited about it. I learned how to do the back lows and the Heimlich maneuver and all the basic stuff for babysitting. Me and my cousins were playing, and we were eating grapes and my two-year-old cousin was right next to us. Then we heard him coughing, so my other cousin ran to go get um, our parents. We were just talking and all of a sudden we hear, um, the baby's choking, the baby's choking. I knew I had to act somehow, I just didn't know how at the time until I remembered the babysitting class. I got to his back and I started giving him five back blows and I turned to see if it had the grape had come out and it hadn't so I gave him a few more. She just knew what to do right away and it just amazed me so much to just see her go over there and just do it. I feel very proud of myself and thankful that I took the babysitting class because it helped me save his life. I have two boys in the service. Matthew has been to Afghanistan twice. Nicholas is in the infantry in the army. A few years ago, we had a little bit of a cancer scare. When we heard that they found some abnormal cells in my breast, the, we contacted, tried to contact Nicholas right away and couldn't get a hold of him because the Army has such strict regulations about when you can and when you can't. And Matthew, it was impossible to get a hold of Matthew. So somebody suggested that we call the Red Cross. They told Matthew that I was going to have to have some surgery. They actually kept in touch with him every couple of hours. They got it so that he could at least put a phone call in to me saying, Mom, I love you, it'll be okay. And Nicholas, they got him a leave of absence because he was stateside so that he could come home, be with me for a couple of days. Thinking that you might have cancer is bad enough. But not knowing where your boys are, where your children are at that time, makes it even that much more stressful. This was another example of help coming from a direction that I didn't even realize that they were involved in this. They seemed to be involved in everything. I have to have my checkups every year like normal and and you know we just didn't give it time to turn into anything. So thank goodness. Yeah, there was a very happy ending to the story. I think it was one, two o'clock in the morning. Said there'd been a fire with fatalities and they needed a disaster team out. The fire had been burning for over an hour before anybody realized that the house was on fire. The fire department came and they went to go up the ladder to try to save him. But the fire blew out of both sides of the house and melted the ladder while he was going up. They died under the windowsill together. And that's how we buried them, together. With my oldest daughter holding my baby girl. So then we just started supporting them. They helped with the deposit on the house. I just couldn't believe you know, I, I call them and I tell them, I said, we don't have no beds, you know, and the floors are all wood and, you know, and by the end of the day, there were beds being donated from everybody and anywhere. I mean, it was just amazing. There was another fatality not long after that that I was assigned to. It was hard to hear of another child after your own. She said that she had uh, read about it, that she had sent a card to the mother and a very generous donation. Thank everybody at the Red Cross for everything. Their patience, their time, their concern, and their love. Because <laughs> that's how we felt. We felt loved. Five years ago, um, I had a stroke. Um, I wasn't supposed to live. <laughs> he fought for his life, and once he did come out of the coma after um, the brain bleed, he had to relearn how to swallow, how to eat, walk, talk, everything. They were going to need uh, trips daily to therapy, 
and this can be a real burden on a family trying to do all that and of course Mark qualified to ride with us and we were more than happy to help him. They did not charge for transportation that it, they just you know would ask for a donation if possible because financially it was so tough because we had all kinds of expenses that were not covered. And I believe it was his 37th birthday Mark was able to get his driver's license to drive his own handicap van so rather than being the story about his handicap or disability, it's a story of how Mark wants to be independent. And what we were doing helped him gain that independence. I just want him to be happy and I want him to be able to continue to spread his joy. A lot of the clients will say, I never thought I'd ever need the Red Cross. Well, you don't until it's time. I think the Red Cross is important to every community. Every time there's a problem, every time the first responders are there, we think about the Red Cross. Every community has an obligation to be supportive in any way they can to something that is so critical. We are the organization that helps people answer the question, what happens next? There are so many people in our community who have experienced disasters in their lives and they're asking the question, what happens next? And the Red Cross is there for them.